Hi, Adventurous Seahorse Part 4. We're going to be doing, we've worked all the way down here and we're going to be putting the fin in, which includes adding, adding, adding single pairs there for such a short length and then we're knotting and cutting off. So to save thread, here's three thread saver methods. First one is, wind all the thread onto one so that you've got that to use for another time. And then on this side, I've tied the thread on with one slip knot, taken the thread down, then whipped the thread over that so that, that I will only be losing about that much thread, which I will be able to save and use for method two, which is take the little bit that you've got left, which is more than enough for that, and tie ordinary thread, <coughs> scrap thread, and wind that. Because I know I'm only going to be using that much of it, I don't need to have it wound around the bobbins. That's method two. And method three, this is a one bobbin wind, and then a leftover thread on this bobbin, just simply tied on. That knot isn't going to get in the work because, again, there's enough space for that to go down. I only need about two and a half inches and then that bit of course will be cut off and that will be ready to wind back on. That's three saver methods. So right we've got to this point here where I've got my passive pair still free, my worker pair has come through, I've introduced two twists on the inside here and two twists on the outside passive there. This is all cloth uh, cross twist, cross twist, all the way across, all these. If you want to put extra twists in on these longer bars, you can do. I'm using a particularly thick thread so it didn't need it. So the thin, I'm going to do, I've got one twist on my worker there, one twist on my passive, and sorry, two twists on the passive. You'll notice that there's a row of dots down here. These are placeholders to keep this line straight. Cross, twist, pin, so I'm doing a half stitch, pin, half stitch. The worker is going through and what that will do is these can come out quite quickly. It's to stop the threads being pulled, this, the, these passes being pulled this way or this way with introducing more. So I'll pin those out of the way. We're now onto the thin so I want, you can see coming up here, they can easily take a, a twist between each of these. So I'll leave a twist on there. Take my first pair on the temporary pin, as we have done before. Cross, twist, cross, twist. Put the pin up inside. Tension. We've got a twist already there, so I can go cross, twist, cross, twist. Put the pin up inside. And then the third pair has wandered off over there. Put it over that pin. Cross, twist, cross, twist. Two twists on the worker. It does look a bit invisible here, like these threads are not hanging on to anything, but they are. And there. Okay, I'm going to tension these down. And that is why you keep your pin on. It's gone and caught another pin. There we go. There we go. That's the three new pairs on there. So doing the same thing, cross twist, cross twist, cross twist, cross twist, put a bit more thread on the workers, cross twist, cross twist, then you come back to this first passive where we're just going to do half stitch, that's cross twist, put a pin up, you put a pin up on the way that way and the way back. It's just to secure the, the line. 
and then cross twist so that we've got a cross sorry a twist ready to enter this one so I'll just tension those I know you're not meant to touch the threads but this is quite a thick thread and it takes some wrangling okay so that's the first bit of the fin done I'm going to be working across the zigzags across the zigzag all the way across putting those half stitch pin half stitch pins in down here until we get to here and then I'll show you how to do the knot in part 5. 